Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we have a critically important topic for you, and that is RV safety. In this video, we're going to give you at least 10 important RV travel safety tips. And because it's impossible to cover all aspects of RV travel safety in one video, unless that video is 10 or 12 hours long. <laughs> if you have specific tips you wanna share with our community, please post a comment beneath this video on YouTube. And because we got a lot to cover, we're gonna get started right away. Yep. Tip number one, tires are one of the leading causes of accidents with regard to RV travel. Tire safety is especially critical and the condition of your tires is especially critical because if you are traveling on tires that are unsafe, then you could potentially lose control of your vehicle. And it happens every year. Somebody suffers a blowout when they're driving your motorhome down the highway. They lose control of their motorhome. You could go into the other lane into oncoming traffic. You could veer off the highway and have you know a terrible accident running into trees or buildings or people. Of course, you need to get good tires Frankly, we run Michelin all around. Uh, our truck Seymour and our Airstream is now fully equipped with Michelin tires. Mm -hmm. We've had the best experience with Michelin. We're not paid by Michelin. You know, they don't sponsor us or anything like that. It's just the tires that came on our Airstream day one, we did not have confidence in, and we suffered several tire blowouts. If your tire blows out and you have a travel trailer, you may suffer thousands of dollars of damage. If tire blows out and you're driving a motorhome, you may have a terrible accident. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. tire pressure monitoring systems, or TPMS. <laughs> TPMS, tire pressure monitoring. You've been waiting to say that. I mean. Yes, I have. Well, uh, if your tires are bad, you probably do have TPMS. When it's that time of the month for your tires, you need one of these gadgets. <laughs> A tire pressure monitoring system is a little technological gadget that monitors the pressure in your tires when you're traveling down the highway. And when you're traveling on really hot days in summer, the pressure inside your tires uh, increases because that hot air expands. And frankly, that's when we suffered blowouts. I mean, every time that yeah. our tires blew out, it was on a, like a really hot summer day. And so the way these little devices work is you have a uh, little attachment that goes inside each tire. These days, with the advent of Bluetooth technology, that stuff is getting pretty cheap, and you can get tire pressure monitoring systems for less than 100 bucks. You can uh, put them on your tires and then monitor the tire pressure inside the cab of your tow vehicle or inside your motorhome. Okay, so the next thing that relates to tires or breakdowns or what have you is this little baby right here. Ooh, I mean, don't you want to sport one of these? Yeah. I mean, it's basically a fluorescent yellow safety reflective vest, and it can save your life because one of the scariest things about having a blowout or a breakdown is being stuck on the side of the road. And hopefully you'll be able to get off an exit or you'll be on a country road somewhere and it won't be as dangerous. But both times we've had our blowouts, we have been on an interstate. And being on the side of the interstate is super scary. People are going 80 miles an hour, if not faster. Many of them don't change lanes and get over to give you any room. They're flying right by you. And so you want to be as visible as possible, especially, of course, at night. But even during the daytime, wearing this vest can save your life and really let people know, okay, something's going on there. I need to, you know, move over. I need to give them some space. So I think this is a very smart item to purchase. We probably should have two, one for each of us. Yeah, because when you're trying to repair your vehicle or inspect your vehicle on the side of a busy highway, you're extremely vulnerable. <laughs> and every year, lots of people get struck and killed yeah. uh, when they become pedestrians. You become a pedestrian, you know, once you're out there dodging traffic to check on your rig. Yeah. So one of these things, cheap insurance. You will feel like an Uber nerd when you try one of these on, but but you'll be 
a living, breathing Uber nerd. And That's that right. is all that will matter. And along those lines, it makes sense to have some sort of emergency beacon. I mean, uh, this is kind of a do-it-all device that we carry that has a really powerful spotlight. It's got a work lamp, but it also has this little flashing emergency beacon. And again, things like this really come in handy if you do have some kind of problem or breakdown on the road. And I know some people carry flares and they also carry the little pop-up triangles. All those things are great to have. I think the more you have, the better. Make yourself and your rig as visible as possible to hopefully ensure your safety when you're broken down on the side of the road, which hopefully you won't ever be. And we do travel with RV roadside assistance and we do it primarily uh, for that situation. If we happen to have a tire blowout in, you know, kind of a more dangerous uh, uh, situation, I would rather have a professional changing the tire, frankly. Right. For me, it's money well spent to have that roadside assistance. And of course, there are times when you might need a tow. And so that's good to have. Next little piece of safety gear we want to show you guys is an anti sway bar. I mean, if you have a towable RV, this is more cheap insurance. I believe the number one cause of accidents involving travel trailers is sway. To control sway, you want an anti sway bar, also known as a sway bar. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we paid around 40 bucks for this. It's kind of a knockoff of a name brand, but it's exactly the same as the name brand. So it's not a whole lot of money. But, you know, every year we see photos online of terrible accidents involving travel trailers, usually out west where there's stiff crosswinds and it creates a trailer sway situation and the trailers, you know, get in terrible accidents. And, of course, everything gets completely totaled and sometimes mm -hmm. people die in these yeah, accidents. Really so, scary. you know, for 30 or 40 bucks, get an anti sway bar. It's kind of a no-brainer. And also another way to hopefully reduce your sway is to not travel with a partially full fresh right. water tank. Because if you put water in a bucket, and Sean did this in a previous video, and you slosh it back and forth, you know, it can get really wobbly. But if you fill it up to the top and it's got a lid on it, you know, it doesn't get that slosh going like it does when it's partially full. So traveling with either a completely empty or a completely full freshwater tank will help you maintain your center of gravity, I think. Yeah, again, for more detailed information on some of these topics, we have specific videos. We have a specific video about the hitch uh, here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't watched that video, I recommend that you watch it. Okay, so the next thing to utilize to increase your safety is your tow mirrors, and specifically that little lower portion on your tow mirrors, because that really shows you who is in your blind spot. And I think that is probably the most dangerous spot to look for when you're changing lanes. Yeah, those lower mirrors are the wide angle. You know, it's called an a spherical mirror or parabolic mirror. Ooh, but, <laughs> but you see the most and you get the most information from those lower mirrors so your line of sight really should go there first when you're when you're looking around to see what's around your rig and i recently did a video about our new tow mirrors we've got mm -hmm. on our truck which were a big upgrade, Major upgrade over the original tow mirrors because we had a larger a spherical uh, mirror on the bottom it was almost double the surface area of the original and you can just see so much better when you're traveling yeah. down the highway really made a night and day difference Okay, so we've talked about traveling from point A to point B. We should also talk a little bit about that whole process of hitching up your rig and or backing up your rig into a campsite. You never want to have anyone in a position between the tow vehicle and the travel trailer. Uh, you, you know, you want to avoid any possibility of an accident where somebody could get crushed between the vehicle and the RV mm -hmm. or between the RV and an object at the campsite. I mean, for example, you know, a lot of these campsites will have trees along the back of the campsite. And there have been situations where people have been pinned between an RV that's backing up and a solid object like a tree. And mm -hmm. you know it's really, really tragic when you hear about something like that happening. Uh, so you always have to have presence of mind you know, not to leave yourself in a position of vulnerability 
where that could happen. And, you know, I'm usually the one standing back there at the tongue of the trailer, you know, while he's backing up the truck. And I've had people say to me, oh, you're standing there. Well, I'm not standing in front of the tongue. I'm standing off to the side of the tongue. You do have to be a little closer when someone's backing up because you have to be able to see if they're meeting up with the ball or not. You have to be able to raise and lower the tongue onto the hitch ball. So you do have to be close enough to do that. So you kind of have to stand off to the side. We just don't want you standing in front of the tongue of the trailer, you know, between the truck and the tongue because that's where you would really get I think you basically need to think in terms of worst case scenario. What if the person backing up the, the truck, uh, what if he has a stroke or something and yeah, mashes, down, mashes down the accelerator and suddenly the truck lurches back into the RV? You know, if you're back there, you need to make sure that if that does happen, you're not vulnerable. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying, yeah. you know. And, of course, when you're walking around a campsite, have the presence of mind. Take a look at any kind of, like, solid objects like trees and so forth. Picnic tables, you know, anything like that because you wouldn't want to get crushed between that and a truck. No. I mean, and, again, that's something with RV camping. You're in a different campsite every time. Mm -hmm. They're all laid out differently. So you just got to have a little bit of presence of mind with regard to those things. Right. Next up, we've talked about your tires. Now let's talk about your fires. A lot of RVs are made of what? Fiberglass. And fiberglass is very flammable. If these things like ever catch on box. fire, yeah, it's like a big, uh, I don't know, a big tinder box. I mean, really, it's yeah. like, you know, if, if they catch on fire, they're going to go up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And every year we see videos of motorhomes that caught on fire and within a matter of minutes are just, you know, they're toasted. toast. They're toast. Completely toast. They're gone. So, you know, there are a lot of things with regard to fire safety. Obviously, you got to have smoke detectors that are working, and you also need to have working fire extinguishers. And on that note... This is a fire extinguisher that we like to carry more than one of, actually. We have one near the bed, one by the front door, and then we have a larger fire extinguisher by the door also. We've got one of these in our truck, too. Yeah, and the thing that is so great about this is it's just like an aerosol can that you just spray like a can of hairspray so there's not you know pulling out a pen or you know aiming it right i mean it's just like a bottle of bug spray you just spray it in the direction we've actually had to use this one time not in our rv but we pulled into a parking space and there was a golf cart that had caught on fire <laughs> And somebody had stepped away from it, and we put out the fire and saved the day. Yeah, we really. Yeah, we really <laughs> did because it was parked really close to this building, and basically the person had had a towel on the seat and tucked it under the seat, and that towel touched the battery and it caught the towel on fire and then proceeded to melt the side of the golf cart. So we just sprayed it down and all was well. So this is easy if you have to think fast there's not a lot of thinking involved it's just grab it and spray it yeah even a child can yeah. use this that's I mean. another thing if you have kids these are great because kids don't have to be able to pull out a pen or anything like that they just spray it like they would bug spray or hairspray or something like that and your fire's out the other thing to know about or think about regarding fires are your emergency exits within your RV. Every RV is laid out differently, so the emergency exits can be completely different depending on your make and model and what have you. You should have at least one window in your RV that is marked emergency exit. It should have like a easy to remove screen and it should be marked in red. And basically that is your chance to escape should your regular exit be blocked for whatever reason. Before the start of every trip, check that window to make sure it opens easily, that you're not going to have to fight it or anything. And just know where that exit is and know that you may have to climb out that bad boy. Yeah, the good news is most RVs you can escape pretty quickly as yeah. long as you know where this stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> I mentioned earlier about checking your smoke detectors. You also need to check your carbon monoxide detectors mm -hmm. because over time, you know, they may lose their effectiveness. Speaking of carbon monoxide, some of you have rigs that have internal generators built into the rig. And of course, those generators are supposed to kick all of their exhaust outside of the rig. However, 
you know, like if it's an older generator or it has some sort of defect in it, uh, it may start to leak carbon monoxide and that carbon monoxide could leak inside the RV. And there have been some really terrible cases where people have been poisoned by carbon monoxide uh, from running a generator overnight. And that generator leaked carbon monoxide inside their RV and their carbon monoxide detector was not working. Or, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the battery was dead in it. Maybe it was just not in good working order. And those people died. And it's so sad to hear those stories because it's such an easily preventable death. Our carbon monoxide detector is actually hardwired, so it is not battery operated. But still, you need to check and make sure all those connections are working properly and just, you know, go that extra step just to make sure everybody's safe. All right, the next thing to think about when it comes to safety is severe weather. When you are traveling in an RV, you are kind of a sitting duck when it comes to really severe weather like tornadoes or hurricanes or even just severe thunderstorms that have strong wind gusts. Those can all be dangerous for you. So we suggest carrying a weather radio. Of course, you can check the local weather wherever you are daily. If there's any call for any sort of storms, make sure you've got your weather radio out, programmed and ready to go. The other thing we recommend is make sure when you check in at whatever campground you're at or wherever you happen to be boondocking, find out what county you're in. Because if you ever notice, when you're watching weather reports, a lot of times they don't go by city or town, they go by county. So if you don't know what county you're in, or if you're in Louisiana, if you don't know what parish you're in, it's not very helpful because you're gonna have no idea what the weatherman is warning you for because you don't know where you are. You know, it's scary to think about, but you also need to know where your shelters are. Obviously, RVs provide very little, if any, protection yeah, like being against in a car. yeah against severe weather. You know, maybe worse than being in a car. I don't know. Yeah, it's bad. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, every weatherman will tell you don't don't stay in a car if things are getting bad. You need to get right. out and cl climb down into a ditch because a car is just waiting to be sucked up. RVs and travel trailers will just uh, collapse like a house of cards yes. if the right wind blows. And every year we hear stories of severe weather uh, passing through RV campgrounds. You can get apps for phones that can be handy, but you have to have a cellular signal and or Wi-Fi, I believe, for those things to really work. And the thing about you know this weather radio, I think it was around 30 bucks. It's battery powered. It um, so it'll work without without any kind of power, without cellular service, and without Wi-Fi. And you know Old we paid school. for an extra 10 bucks to get one that actually has a radio radio. So if we just yeah. want to listen to the radio, we can do that. The weather radio aspect of it though uh, is very useful. I think in times of severe weather, you will appreciate having this on board. A severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect for Shelby. Because when it goes off, it is loud. It will wake you up. I'm a really deep sleeper and this this will wake me up. <laughs> yeah. Finally, as someone who broke his freaking foot stepping out of his RV, I would be remiss not to mention the step. You know, after we did a little video about my incident with my broken foot, we heard from a lot of viewers yeah. who experienced similar situations where people slipped and fell getting out of their RV. A lot of broken feet, a lot of broken arms, you know, where people caught themselves the wrong way. So it's a really easy thing to do, falling, getting out. I fell last year getting out of our Airstream. I didn't break anything, thank goodness. I hurt my back. I basically did the, the banana peel, uh, <laughs> slip and fall out the front door. It was rainy, you know, and I just stepped out. I had on tennis shoes but just wasn't enough and so I wasn't holding on. We so. now have a house rule. We do have a little grab handle on our Airstream by the step and the house rule is you gotta have your hand on that handle when you're coming out of the RV. <laughs> Safety first when you're carrying a chihuahua. And we also oh, right. always now check the surface of the step because if leaves fall on the step, they will get slick. And the step Which is what contributed slippery. to my 
tall. Yeah, there were wet <laughs> leaves on the step when yeah. Christy was stepping down. There are products you can get to stabilize your step. In fact, I have here a uh, step support, and this thing is designed to go beneath your bottom step, provide more stability. Uh, I frankly did not like this one. Like it didn't really work well for us. And I don't know if we need two of these instead yeah. of just having this one. This surface I think needs to be bigger. Yeah, it's sort of, <laughs> ironically, I think we put this under our step and it, it wobbled it more. more. So I felt safer <laughs> taking it out. So that didn't work very well. So don't buy this. Don't buy this unless, you know, maybe we need two of these, one on each side. Maybe that would work better. Or maybe you guys know of a better step support out there. Yeah, and Airstreams are relatively close to the ground compared to most other RVs. Yeah. So people that are in like fifth wheels or these really tall, you know, travel trailers have a lot of clearance underneath. I mean, if you fall out one of those, you're falling like four feet now. Bones That's, are probably going to break. Learn from our mistakes and hold on. <laughs> so that's it guys, at least 10 tips with regard to RV travel safety. This was by no means a comprehensive list because no. like I said, we could probably talk for three hours about tire safety. And does anyone want to listen to three hours <laughs> about tire safety? Probably not. But hopefully this video got you thinking about RV safety and RV mm -hmm. travel and kind of what's unique about RV travel as relates to safety. Unless you're a full timer, for you know many people when they're in their rv it's a bit of an unusual situation mm -hmm. you know when you get it for the first time maybe you didn't grow up rv camping so it's it's something new and you don't have that reservoir of experience to draw from when you're on the highway you get thrown into the hot seat so to speak and you got to make a lot of decisions you're not accustomed to making and some of these rv rigs are pretty big you know mm -hmm. <laughs> I, there are professional truck drivers that drive smaller rigs than yeah. our Airstream rig, for example. So, all right, guys, and as a reminder, if you're interested in any of these products, of course, they will be linked in the YouTube description for this video. Clicking those links supports our show. Until next time, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. If you are new here, please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Make sure they know all about RV safety on the road and at campgrounds, etc. If you like Long Long Honeymoon, please share our channel. You guys are our marketing department. <laughs> and right. uh, we really appreciate all that you have done to kind of spread the word about our videos here on YouTube. If you're subscribed and you want to make sure you never miss a video ever, click that little bell next to the subscribe button and that way you will get a notification every time we upload a new video. All right, guys, that's it for RV travel safety tips. Again, if you have any that you would like to share with us or the rest of our audience, please leave them in the comments down below this video and your comment might end up in a future Long Long Honeymoon video. Until next time, Lolo. Lolo. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Anything else? Mm, nope. <laughs> <laughs> By popular demand, Long Long Honeymoon is now on Patreon. If you want to be a Loloho VIP, check it out. <laughs>